Okay, we're going to learn how to do solving quadratic equations by factoring. So when we look at our first problem, notice it says solve by factoring and it is set equal to zero. Something you need to remember is if the equation is not all on one side set equal to zero, don't start the factoring process. This one's ready to go. So we're going to look at these numbers in the back, this negative 28, and we're looking at what two numbers when multiplied would give us negative 28 but when added together would give us a negative 3 here in the middle and so you can sit and think about all the two numbers that when multiplied would give you negative 28 you got to be careful with your signs the two numbers that work are negative 7 and positive 4 but use your calculator double check it make sure you're getting the right answer and then you can just go straight to writing the parentheses it's x minus 7 and x plus 4 to finish by solving you got to set each one of these individually set equal to 0 and then solve just like this and so when we solve the first one for x you get x is 7 when you solve the next one for x you get negative 4 so these are the answers this is how you solve by factoring but don't forget when we were graphing these we could see where they were crossing the x-axis so I went to the Desmos calculator on this next page and you can check your answers uh, this way you can use your graphing calculator or Desmos but look they're crossing at negative 4 and positive 7. So don't forget to do that, especially on the evens. Okay, the next factoring problem, x squared plus 6x plus 9. Again, you're thinking about what factors of 9 when added together give you 6. And this one happens to be um, the same number, just twice. It is a positive 3 and a positive 3. Now when you go to solve this one, you set x plus 3 equal to 0, and you get x is negative 3. I wanted to remind you what this looks like. You have a parabola, and the parabola is sitting on the x-axis at negative 3. Remember how you would see that one answer sometimes? Well, this is a one answer um, solution uh, when you were looking at the graphs from the last section. So that's unique, um, but you can still do it by factoring, no problem. Okay. The next one is 2n squared minus 12n. On a lot of your homework problems, you're going to need to pull a GCF out. Now, what I mean by that is you're looking for a number or and or a variable that can come out of both terms. In this case, and it can be all three terms, but in this case, we're just looking at these two terms. You can pull a 2 out of both of these and an n, and so that is your GCF. So you want to pull the 2n out. Now, when you divide this by 2n, you're going to get n. When you divide negative 12n by 2n, you get the negative 6. These are still two factors that need to be set equal to 0 and then solve. So the first one would look like 2n just equal to 0. The other one is n minus 6. Set it equal to 0 and then solve for the n. So this first one is n is 0 and then this one is n is 6. And you can still graph this out. You can use an x squared and an x. You're going to see it's crossing the x-axis at 0 and 6, so don't forget that you can check those by graphing. Now, all the problems I've done so far were set equal to 0. A lot of your homework will just say factor. When it just says factor, you just factor. That's the old-timey problems. You don't have to figure out what they're equal to by setting them equal to 0. So I just wanted to remind you, this is the difference of two squares. It will always have a minus sign here. This will be a perfect square, perfect square, x squared is perfect square, y squared is perfect square. They're really quick and easy to factor. You just think about their square roots. So this would be a 5, this would be an x, this would be a 6, and this would be a y. And you literally just write down your answer like this, and it doesn't matter which one comes first at all. Just make sure they're both not positive or both not negative. But notice no equal to 0, so you don't have to find the solution for that. So let's look at this next one. 3x squared minus 24x plus 36. No equal to 0, you're just factoring. And when you first look at it, I want you to start thinking about this on every problem because in a lot of your homework, there's a lot of GCFs that need to be pulled out. So try to remember I said that. So a lot of the homework, you're going to be pulling a number out. In this case, you can pull a 3 out of everybody. <clears throat> so when you do that, this is what you got left. 3x squared minus 8x and then plus 12. From here, you're not finished. From here, you want to look at it and see if you can factor. Well, factors of 12 and add it together give us a negative 8. And you've got to be careful with the signs on this one. The two factors, when you go through the long list, thinking about them, it is a 6 and a 2, but they're both negative. 
and then you're actually done. There's nothing else you can have to do. You don't have to solve or anything. That one's finished. But make sure you're always looking for the GCF. There's a lot of the homework problems that have that. Okay, now, the last ones I wanted to show you, you actually probably won't get till the second day of the homework. And that's where they, they it's worked backwards. They're going to give you the final roots or the zeros or the solutions, basically the x-intercepts. They give you that up front. Your job is to write the equation. Remember, whatever equa quadratic equation you come up with, you could go graph it and make sure it matches these two answers. So don't forget all that. But in your notes, write this down. Work it out backwards. And this is going to be a little strange, but what you're going to do is take both of these and just go backwards the way you would have come up with them. So the first thing I want you to do is just say x equals negative 6 and x equals 4 because that's how your answers would have looked when you solved them. Then you want to get both of these set equal to 0. So to get this one back over, you got to add 6. And to get this one back over, you got to subtract the 4. So it looks like that. Okay, now you're going to take both these answers back together, kind of like you would have solved to begin with, and you're going to write it down like this, <clears throat> and then you're going to multiply the two factors using FOIL, first, outer, inner, last, and then we're going to get our quadratic, and there it is, x squared plus 2x minus 24, because we would do x times x, the outer is negative 4x, the inner is positive 6x, and then you'd have a negative 24. Remember, you could go graph that real quick. And you're going to see it's crossing negative 6 and 4. So these are kind of cool, just they're different. And so I want to make sure you knew how to work those out. Let me just do one more. It has a fraction in it, and I thought it might be a little bit more challenging. So let me show you negative 3 over 2 and 6. So if you remember what I just showed you, just say x equals negative 3 halves and x equals 6. Do that first. Now this one's a little strange. I don't like fractions. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that fraction. This one, you can go ahead and strike 6, bring it over equal to 0. Okay, so this is starting to look a little better. From here, you want to add the 3, and you got your two factors. There they are. We just need to set them side by side, and then we can do FOIL. So we're going to do first, outer, inner, last. First will be 2x times x, x 2x squared. And then the outer is negative 12x. The inner is positive 3x. And the last is negative 18 and then we're going to put these two back together because they're like terms, and we get negative 9x in the middle. There it is. And again, don't forget, go graph it. Now, I know that's at negative 1 and a half, but you can clearly see that on the graphing calculator. So make sure you do a good job checking all your answers, and hope you enjoy.